how this bird uses the feathers, how it interacts with, with the air. And we can measure the forces using a sensor attached at the tip, at the bottom, of, at the belly of the robot. A machine with wings, with tendons, with memory. This isn't science fiction. This is how nature is teaching machines to fly and maybe to think. It started with a child somewhere in Europe, watching birds weave through the sky. That child was Dario Floriano. He didn't want to become a pilot. He wanted to understand flight itself, not just the movement, but the intelligence behind it. Decades later, on the edge of Lake Geneva, he built a lab that would ask a simple question. What if machines could learn from life? What if wings could remember? What if the sky belonged to more than just nature? A lab by the lake. At the Laboratory of Intelligent Systems, or LIS, nestled on the tranquil shores of Lake Geneva, silence is not empty. It's full of ideas. The lab doesn't chase drones for delivery apps or surveillance contracts. It chases something older, something instinctive. It asks how living things solve problems and how machines might one day do the same. Dario Floriano founded the lab in 2005. He believed that technology shouldn't only copy biology, it should evolve with it. And in this quiet place, away from noise and markets, his team began building machines that didn't just move but adapted. Machines that didn't just fly, but responded. The goal was ambitious, drones that could change shape mid-air. Not through brute force or dozens of motors, but through elegance, through simplicity drawn from nature's design. It was here that the team would build something extraordinary, a new kind of machine. Not a helicopter, not a plane, but something different something closer to a bird than a robot. The raptor is born. They called it the raptor, not because it was dangerous, but because it moved like it remembered what it once was. A shape taken from the northern goshawk, a bird of prey that cuts through forests at full speed, banking through tight turns with a grace no man-made craft has ever matched. The Raptor wasn't built to be fast or powerful. It was built to be alive. It could glide, twist, slow, and dive. It didn't need a runway. It didn't need instructions. It adapted. The drone's body wasn't rigid. It bent. It breathed. Its wings shifted in real time, responding to the air like a bird adjusting to a sudden gust of wind. This wasn't a prototype for a commercial drone. It was an experiment in understanding. Studying birds was one thing, but to build something that behaved like one, that was entirely different. And so the engineers watched the hawk. They studied how it moved, where it shifted weight, and how it used its tail like a second set of wings. And from that, they began shaping a drone that didn't fly like a machine. It flew like a memory, like instinct. Wings that think. The wings were the first miracle. They weren't fixed like airplane wings or spinning like rotors. They were joined, three segments, just like a bird's. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. Each one moved, not with dozens of motors, but with one. A single motor connected to a pulley and string system guided by tendons of synthetic fiber, like ligaments. The feathers, yes, feathers were artificial. 20 of them carved from foam and carbon fiber. Nine on the outer wing, 11 on the inner. Each one could shift slightly, overlapping when folded, opening when spread. They weren't decorations. They created a lift. They controlled drag. They worked together, like fingers curling into a fist. And beneath it all, the frame. A skeleton of glass fiber, laser cut for strength, but shaped for weightlessness. Every part of the Raptor was designed to feel light, responsive. 
but strong. It wasn't just made to fly, it was made to react. The beauty of it all wasn't just in what it did, it was in how little was needed to do it. A bird doesn't waste energy, neither does this drone. That's not just engineering, that's understanding. It's how wings begin to think. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The secret in the tail. But if the wings made the drone fly, the tail made it feel alive. On most machines, the tail is an afterthought, a simple rudder. But for the Raptor, it was something else entirely, a tool of balance, of control, of expression. Eleven overlapping feathers, just like a hawk's. Each one can twist and flex. Together, they formed a tail that could bend and rotate, not just up and down, but side to side, even diagonally. And it was here, in the wake of the wings, that the secret was found. When the tail twisted, it caught uneven air, turbulence created by the wings themselves. That imbalance in airflow, it created an imbalance in lift. And that lift, when carefully managed, caused the drone to roll, to turn, to pivot, without jerking or drifting. It didn't need to bank like a jet. It slipped through the sky like something born to it. At the same time, the tail altered the drone's pitch, tilting the nose up, increasing the angle of attack, and giving the wings even more lift during a turn. This wasn't just a flight. This was a flight with intention, with grace, with precision, just like the bird it mimicked. Learning to fly smarter. But grace alone wasn't enough. Nature doesn't just fly, it learns. It adapts, it improves. So the engineers at LS taught the Raptor to do the same, not through manual coding, but through trial, through error. Through a form of machine learning called reinforcement learning, the drone itself became the student. Each flight became a lesson. Each decision carried a consequence. If it turned too wide, it was penalized. If it chose an efficient path, it was rewarded. Slowly, over thousands of simulated flights, the Raptor began to understand. Not in words, in instincts, in patterns, in pressure. The system started discovering flight configurations that no human had predicted. One discovery stood out. At high speeds, the tail could be angled to create more drag, which seemed inefficient, until it allowed the larger wings to tuck in. That trade-off reduced overall drag more than expected. It was counterintuitive, but it worked. The optimization system, called Bayesian optimization, kept learning, adjusting, and morphing the wings in real time to find that perfect balance between speed, stability, and energy use. In one test, it increased efficiency by 11.6% over fixed wing designs. Not because it flew harder, but because it flew smarter, because it was learned. Edible wings and walking birds. Not every invention from the LES lab takes to the sky in silence. Some hope, some walk, some can be eaten. Yes, eaten. In one of their most unusual experiments, the team built a drone with edible wings. Designed for search and rescue, it could drop food in remote areas or become food itself if a hiker was stranded and starving. Foam and fiber were replaced with rice cakes and gelatin. Strange, yes, but practical. In a crisis, survival matters more than elegance. Then there's the Raven, still in development. A fixed-wing drone that doesn't need a runway. It can hop, perch, and walk awkwardly across rocky terrain. The idea is to blend the advantages of birds and ground creatures. Not every place can be reached by flight alone. And in perhaps the strangest experiment of all, researchers have turned to taxidermy. By using real preserved bird bodies fitted with small motors, they've created drones that can blend into flocks. For wildlife monitoring, it's perfect. 
nature doesn't even notice. These projects aren't just clever. They're unsettling, blurring the lines between what's living, what's made, and what's useful. A new era of machines is unfolding, one that looks less robotic and more familiar, or hard lessons from the sky. But nature is never perfect, and neither is flight. The Raptor wasn't built in theory. It was tested in wind tunnels, in open skies, in unpredictable weather. And sometimes things break. Wings snapped mid-turn, actuators failed mid-flight. The drone tumbled, crashed, and hit the ground hard. But that was part of the plan. Failure wasn't an accident, it was data. Every break taught the engineers something. How pressure moved through the frame, where tendons stretched too far, what materials bent instead of breaking. They began building drones, not just to fly, but to survive what flying demanded. Even more impressive was how the Raptor handled these failures. In many cases, its algorithms are adapted. A failed actuator didn't end the flight, it changed the flight. The drone recalculated, shifted weight, compensated using other parts of its body. Just like a bird with a wounded wing, it kept going. That resilience wasn't just mechanical, it was philosophical. This wasn't a machine made to win perfect races. It was made to live through real skies with all their chaos. And in that struggle, it became something more than functional. It became believable, almost a live. The bigger vision. The Raptor isn't alone in its journey. At CES, the world's largest tech show, Delta Airlines hosted a keynote. Among sleek slides and polished promises, one speaker from Airbus said something unexpected. They're already testing biomimicry in experimental aircraft. Real planes, real skies, right now. What began in a quiet lab beside Lake Geneva has begun to ripple outward, across continents, into hangars, into flight tests, into the future. Morphing wings aren't just for drones anymore. They could help fighter jets become more agile, or long-range planes adjust mid-flight to conserve fuel. Not by adding more power, but by learning when to yield, when to bend, when to flow with the sky instead of fighting it. The possibilities reach far beyond warfare or industry. They reach into how we understand flight itself. For a century, we tried to conquer the sky with metal and force. But birds never conquered it. They belonged to it. And now, we're learning that maybe the best way to fly is to stop resisting. To build machines not in our image, but in nature's. And let them change, just like the world around them. A machine with wings with tendons, with memory. It doesn't roar. It doesn't dominate. It listens to the air, to the wind, to the world it moves through. Dario Floriano once dreamed of robots that would fight injustice. But perhaps the real revolution is quieter. A drone that folds its wings like a bird, that twists its tail like instinct, that learns not from code, but from flight itself. In the space between science and nature, something new is emerging. Something alive, but not living, built by us, guided by evolution. And in that fragile shape, our future, riding on feathers.